With the wildly successful launch of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we thought we'd take a look through the history of the Assassin's Creed franchise to see how we got here in ancient Greece. We might even mention some games you didn't know about, some games you've forgotten, and some that'll bring back so much nostalgia you won't know what to do with it. Be warned, there may be spoilers ahead. But before we get into the evolution of Assassin's Creed, subscribe to The Gamer and ring that bell to join the Assassin Brotherhood so you never miss any of our Assassin's Creed Odyssey videos. Without further ado, let's get started. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the latest in a long line of games put out by Ubisoft as part of the Assassin's Creed franchise, and we love it. We adore the way you can travel through ancient Greece and learn the secrets of the Assassins. You have a spear at your disposal, and you even have the choice of whether to be Alexios or Cassandra. Frankly, the game looks brilliant, and it sounds just as good. We wouldn't expect anything less from this franchise. And we're looking forward to getting to the bottom of all the mysteries the game is hiding from us. Assassin's Creed Odyssey may feel incredibly new, but but of course, it's not the first game in the series. There have been so many Assassin's Creed games over the years, we lost count. Everything Assassin's Creed has done has fed into the games following the original, kind of like how memories work, only different. So we thought, why not go back to the very beginning to find out how we got where we are now? The roots of the series are found, like all the best games, both inside the gaming world and outside it. For instance, let's look at one of the key influences on the first game, the novel, Alamut, by Slovenian novelist Vladimir Bartol, which came out in 1938. This was the story of Hassan ibn Sabah and his leadership of the secretive assassins. Does this sound familiar to you? What if we said it featured the slogan, nothing is true, everything is permitted? Yeah, you can see where we're going with this. There was also the Prince of Persia series, especially its 2003 game, Sands of Time. These games involved a lot of running, jumping, floating, and sneaking, all wrapped up in a Middle Eastern location. Again, we think you can see what we're getting at with this. In fact, Ubisoft, who make both games, originally wanted Sands of Time to feature an assassin as a playable character, but that idea was shelved. Nonetheless, those two ingredients were put together in a big gaming pot and stuck in the oven of development, meaning that in 2007, gamers were able to feast on the delicious banquet which was the first Assassin's Creed. People hadn't seen anything like it. Well, maybe not unless they'd played Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Anyway, you took on the persona of Desmond Miles, who, using a device called the Animus, takes over the body of his ancestor, Altair ibn Ahad, which we're told is Arabic for bird, son of no one, as he traverses the medieval Middle East in search of the mystical Apple of Eden. Needless to say, after five minutes, just like all of you at home, we were hooked. It wasn't too long before another one of Desmond Miles' ancestors came to town. The town in question was Florence, Italy, and the ancestor was Ezio Auditori da Firenze. This was the first game in the series to make use of the Anvil game engine, and people loved the look, feel, and playability it brought to the table. Of course, Assassin's Creed needs to have some kind of mystery to it, and in this case, Case, it was who the mysterious Templar known as the Spaniard was. Spoiler alert, it was Rodrigo Borgia, later known as Pope Alexander VI. Anyway, if traipsing around Renaissance Italy wasn't enough for you, Ezio had a special power which Altair lacked. He could swim, which meant he could actually avoid embarrassing drowning incidents, and this was useful when the game moved to Venice. Things had changed for Desmond, too. He had been rescued from his confinement by undercover assassin Lucy Stillman and taken to a safe house, where he was able to access Ezio's memories. Oh, and you know the Apple of Eden? That hadn't gone away and played a crucial part in the game. Gamers really liked the character of Ezio, and luckily it wasn't too long before he came back. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood was launched in 2010 and was the biggest game yet. It featured a major change in the way the game was played. If you destroyed one of the Borgia towers scattered across Rome, you could recruit new members to the Brotherhood, which always proved useful. Whereas in previous games it made sense to wait for enemies to attack you, now the first hit was the strongest, meaning it paid to get your retaliation in first. You could also ride a horse into combat and so much more. It was a big step in the right direction for Ubisoft and the game was so well received it won a BAFTA award. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood told us how Desmond, Lucy, and the other assassins escaped from an attack by the Templars and hid out in the Italian city of Monteregioni. Hiding out, Desmond was sent back into Ezio's genetic memory to try and retrieve the Apple of Eden. In trying to do so, Ezio visited Rome, Naples, and the Kingdom of Navarre. As the Apple was about to be retrieved, tragedy and a spoiler struck, with Lucy getting killed and Desmond
determined being knocked into a coma. There was also the appearance of a mysterious being called Juno to deal with who felt humanity lacked knowledge. What would happen next? Who was Juno? What was up with the apple? Would Desmond be back in the Animus? Find out in the next episode of Assassin's Creed, or right now. There was only one way to find the answers to these questions, which was revealed to humanity, at least it was revealed to the parts of humanity who played the Assassin's Creed games, in Assassin's Creed Revelations. Gamers who had been following the storyline closely would have noticed that there was meant to be a terrible disaster befalling the world in 2012. This was especially worrying in the run-up to Revelations release, which took place in, wait for it, 2011. Close, eh? Players could experience the hook blade, which could zipwire people across cities and drag enemies closer for an attack. There was also a tower defense minigame, which could get annoying, but man did it help stop those pesky Templars. More to the point, Altair came back, as a comatose Desmond tried to access both his and Ezio's memories to awaken. The game took you to medieval Constantinople, Cappadocia, and Masyaf. It was in Masyaf where Ezio learned of a secret artifact created by Altair, which could potentially bring an end to the conflict between the Brotherhood and the Templars. Well, it turns out it was actually a library to help preserve the Apple of Eden. Confused yet? We certainly were. Anyway, we're gonna give you a spoiler here. A first civilization being called Jupiter appears to Desmond and tells him how to save the world from an impending solar flare. In turn, this leaves Desmond awake and realizing what it is he now has to do. It turned out what Desmond had to do was get involved in the shenanigans of Assassin's Creed 3, released in October 2012, just in time for the end of the world. Well, it's not a huge spoiler to say the end of the world didn't happen, because 2012 was some time ago and you're watching this right here right now. The game had some pretty cool changes. For instance, free running was made simpler, allowing for more straightforward use of parkour in both cities and in the wild, while you could dual wield weapons, which was always handy when things got violent. It's an Assassin's Creed game, so of course things were gonna get violent at some point. There was also the Assassin's Navy, which was sort of explained later on. We're getting ahead of ourselves though. Anyway, you're probably wondering how the whole terrible apocalypse thing was averted, and we'll tell you. Desmond was able to hack into the life of Radan Hagedon, his ancestor and a descendant of a Native American woman and a colonial settler. Anyway, Radan Hagedon, known as Connor to his colonial friends and foes, was living in America around the time of the Revolutionary War. He has to find a mysterious key which could maybe bring an end to the conflict between the Brotherhood and the Templars. In the meantime, Desmond gets fed up with Abstergo, who we learn is a front for the Templars, ordering him about. He then finds out his destiny is to become a god when the world is destroyed by a solar flare, but he decides to rebel against it. He activates a pedestal which saves the world but kills him in the process. This brings an end to Desmond's story because, you know, he's dead. What it didn't bring an end to though was Assassin's Creed. The games were way too popular to end there, so Assassin's Creed 4 was inevitable. When it was given the name Black Flag, it was clear it was gonna involve men in shorts playing hardcore punk and shouting. It didn't really. It involved pirates, the swashbuckling kind, not the downloading stuff illegal. Kind. Awesome. The game saw you take control of Edward Kenway, Radon Hagedon's grandfather, and saw you splice the main brace and sail the Spanish main while wielding cutlasses. Heck yeah! We absolutely loved this game in case you didn't notice. While Desmond was at this point still very much dead, Abstergo was alive. It had branched out into entertainment in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, home of developers Ubisoft, Leonard Cohen, and, wait for it, the gamer! Hello to us! Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, Edward Kenway, born in Swansea, Wales, became a pirate to escape a life of drunkenness, debauchery, and violence. Not really. Being a pirate sounds pretty awesome, and besides, the weather's usually nice. You end up controlling him because Abstergo wants to collect more information about Desmond Miles, and this is the best way to go about it. You take control of his ship, the Jackdaw, as you explore the Caribbean and get caught up in the Templar vs. Brotherhood feud. You also have some cool sea shanties to keep you entertained, and in the meantime, see if you can identify who the Sage really is. Spoiler time, you can't. Moving on to 2014, Assassin's Creed Rogue saw you switch sides and play as a Templar. Shay Patrick Cormac is an ex-assassin who switched sides after being betrayed by his former brother. Your job as Shay is to step into his world of the Seven Years' War, track your betrayers down, and kill them. In the meantime, you can explore North America and sail in the Morrigan. The game resolves itself when you uncover a secret in the modern day and have a choice to make. Join the Knights Templar or die. 
The question wasn't entirely resolved in Assassin's Creed Unity. What was resolved was the ability to have character stats and improve them, which took Ubisoft long enough to introduce. Exploring revolutionary Paris was never going to be easy, but at least Ubisoft made it fun. Arno Victor Dorian is a man on a quest to discover the truth, both about his past and what really caused the revolution. Remember the Apple of Eden? Of course you do. Well, this game features the Sword of Eden, which is both sharper and more explosive. The game doesn't do much outside of Arno's memory, but we're not complaining. We also aren't complaining about Assassin's Creed Syndicate either. Starring the twins Jacob and Evie Fry as they roamed around Victorian London, this was as close as Assassin's Creed ever got to Grand Theft Auto. We mean, it wasn't actually like GTA at all, but it did feature organized crime as an aspect, along with the usual Brotherhood Templar brouhaha. You could use a sword stick, brass knuckles, and a revolver as you tried to solve mysteries, including the one about Jack the Ripper, if you bought the downloadable content, as well as foiling an assassination attempt on Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli. All good fun, but there was a feeling the franchise might have been getting stale. Assassin's Creed Origins took that criticism to heart and shook things up more than any other game in the series so far. You were further back in time than ever before, in Ptolemaic Egypt to be precise. As Bayek, you saw firsthand the things which helped create the feud between the Templars and the Brotherhood. You also got your very own pet eagle, Senu. Awesome. Anyway, you discover how Bayek becomes one of the very first assassins, and you also meet William Miles, who comes to offer Layla Hassan a role. You know, the Layla who got us into the game in the first place. Is he related to Desmond, we wonder? Of course he is. William's his father. So now we get to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Ancient Greece has never looked so good, nor so mysterious. Whether you're working for the Delian League from Athens or the Peloponnesian League of Sparta, your adventure looks amazing, and there are plenty of mysterious goings on, but we're not going to spoil the game for you. It just came out. So, we wonder, what's next for Assassin's Creed? We've had loads of great games already. We honestly can't think of a bad one. But there's more history to explore. We haven't seen ancient Rome, medieval England, Moorish Spain, or anywhere in Africa or Eastern Asia yet. Heck, was Desmond really telling the truth when he said he was unaware of things? Perhaps he could return one day too. As it stands right now, this is far from the end of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Assassin's Creed has gone through a lot of changes since 2007, so we have to ask, what's your favorite Assassin's Creed game? Where would you like the series to go next? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.